focus on hitting your goals in every area of your business. Remember, the universe rewards the bold. A leader has to take the risks. What I'm gonna do tonight is I put together a list of 13 things, right? 13 steps to help you pass any multiple choice test that you take. And if you get these down, when you go in to take your test, it will help you tremendously. I tell people all the time when I do these classes or when I do securities license classes that I could probably walk in and take a law test or some other test and be pretty close to passing just off of these tips alone. So I'm hoping that they help you guys, right? It, it doesn't mean don't study for the test. It doesn't mean don't do your practice quizzes. Don't follow the system in POL. It means do this on top of that, and that will help you get over the top. Maybe those few questions that you're not sure about, it'll help you answer those questions, and then we'll go from there. So, and then one other thing, I, I'm, gonna, I'm going to give you the list of them, but at the end, I will give you my phone number, and if you text me your name and your email address, I will send you the list then that way you can take notes, but listen to what I'm saying right now so you understand it, and then you'll have the list to study from. So at the end, I will give you my phone number if you don't have it, and then you just send me your name and your email, and I will send it to you tonight so you have a copy of it. Um, so pay attention. So number one, we're gonna start with number one. So, right, and some of these are basic. So these are things you should be doing anyway, but these are the, in all my time teaching and all my time studying and training and right teaching securities classes for the last 20 years, believe it or not, people still forget to do some of these because they think they know the answer, they, they got it down or whatever it is. But you want to follow these very closely and it'll help you pass. I would say it'll give you at least 10 to 20% on the test extra. So maybe even higher. So uh, the first one is read the question in full before you even look at an answer. Then come up with your own answer before you look at the choices. So you should read the question and in your head, see if you can answer that question without looking at the answers first, okay? So if you do that, the percentages are really high, like above 75% that you have the right answer in your head. So make sure you read the full question and try to answer it in your head first before you even look at the choices for what the options are, right? Number two, you wanna make sure, be careful you don't read too much into the question. Don't try to second guess the test, right? There's no trick answers. There's no trick answers on the test, okay? Now, do they put things in there like to make sure you're reading it? Yes. Okay, I'm going to get to one of those in a minute. But there's no trick answer. So don't second guess yourself thinking they're trying to trick you. They just want you to know the information. If you know the information, you're going to pass. So that was number two. Number three, a positive choice is more likely than a negative choice. Okay? So maybe you don't know the answer or you're not really sure if the question's positive or negative, more than likely the answer is going to be positive. The reason why is with negative questions or negative answers, there usually is a longer explanation that has to come with that. And there's also usually exceptions to every rule, right? So most of the time, it's going to be a positive answer instead of a negative answer, right? Number four, don't go against your first impulse unless you're sure you're wrong, right? Go with your first impulse. If you've done the study and, and taken the practice quiz, Go with your first impulse. The only time you shouldn't do that is when you know you're wrong, right? And sometimes that means going back because you another question, right, clicks in your head and then you realize you got that one wrong, then you can go with the second answer. But try to go with the first answer every single time. So very important, right? Number five, check for negative words before you answer the question. And this is what I mean, right? As an example would be, which of the following is not A, B, C, or D, right? So, or it'll say something like, the answer to this is everything except, 
right? And sometimes if you don't read through that and realize they're going to put the answer that's the opposite of that answer in there. So make sure you look for those words like accept, not, things like that. Okay. Number six, the answer is usually wrong if it contains these words. And again, the reason why is because these words always come with exceptions or need more detail, and they can't put that in that long of a question. So if these words are in there, it's probably not the right answer, right? All, always, never, or none. And like I said, usually, but most of the time, if that's in there, then the answer, you're going to get true false questions that are like that. So you want to make sure, right, more than likely, if the question has all, always, never, or the word none, right, it's usually wrong. So same with the answers. So number seven, the answer contains a great chance of being right. Listen to me, right? You have a better chance of the answer being right if it has the word sometimes, probable, or the word some. If those are in the answer, more than likely they're gonna go, they're gonna be correct. And again, and I wanna stop and say this one more time, right? What you wanna do is study like you're supposed to study for the test. When you get in there and you take it, the first question that comes up, right? If the answer pops into your head and that's the answer, that's one of the choices, you wanna go with that. You don't wanna second guess your, yourself. But if you come to a question that you don't know, right, or you're not sure, the best part about these tips is that it'll help you eliminate the answers that are not correct, right? So imagine if it's four, if you have four options, A, B, C, and D, and one of these tips, right, takes one question out, one, or one answer out, that means you're down to three. That gave you a 25% increase of getting it right. If it pulls out two, now you got a 50% chance. Even if you're guessing at 50%, you're going to get some right, and that might be enough to get you to pass the test if you need it. Okay? Number eight, when you do not know the right answer, seek out the wrong answer. So if you're answering a question and you have no idea what the right answer is, then you want to go through the answers and pick out the ones that you know can't be the answer because they're a definition to something else or the date's wrong or whatever it is. And again, the reason you do that is because it gives you a higher percentage chance of picking the right answer at that point. That helps you get the question right because your percentages go up. Number nine, don't eliminate any answer unless you actually know what the word means. If you don't know what the definition of the word is, don't just automatically eliminate it if there's a word in there that you don't know, right? You got to keep it in there and follow those other steps. So really, these tips you're really going to have to memorize before you go and take your test because you're going to need to know them as you're going through, right, the questions. And again, you're going to have questions that you know automatically. Just go to the next question. You shouldn't stop at every question and try to put all 13 of these tips in to make sure you got it right. Okay, if you follow the first one, number one, which was if you read the question and you have the answer in your head and it's in there, then the chances are over 75% that that's gonna be the right answer. So these are for questions that you're not sure of. These are for questions that you know you have no clue, right? That you didn't study that part or maybe you just, your brain goes dead that point in time. That's when you really wanna have these. But imagine, right, I could tell you so many people that didn't memorize these and miss the test by two questions or five questions or, right? And this could have been the difference between them failing and passing. That's why you wanna have this information, okay? So number 10, don't seek out any pattern. There are no patterns in these tests, right? And what I mean by that is just because the answer, let's say was C, right? Appeared three times in a row, C, C, C. C. It doesn't mean number four is gonna be C, okay? Don't do that. Some people think that's what's going on is they do five questions. There's a, there's a thing going around a couple of years ago where every five questions had to be the same letter answer. People were trying to do that on the test and they were failing. So don't do that. Don't look for patterns. There is no patterns. The questions are random. They're going to come up random. There's no pattern. If you happen to get 
three C answers in a row, it doesn't mean the fourth one is going to be C. So make sure you don't do that. So that'll help a lot. Okay. Three more to go. Number 11, read every answer before you pick one. The test will have decoy answers that are almost right, but tempt you before you look at, at all the answers. So after you read the question, and ha if you don't have it in your head, and you read the answers, read all of the answers before you choose, right? Because sometimes they'll put a decoy like the first one as A or B, and then people will just pick that because they think it's almost right when it actually is C or D, okay? So make sure you're doing that. Make sure that's part of your studying habit, right? Don't look for, make sure you read all the answers before you answer the question. Number 12, the longest out, the longest answer or most complicated answer is often correct, okay? Some questions are forced to add qualifying clauses, excuse me, or phrases to make the answers complete or unequivocal, right? Which means it has to be that answer. So if you're not sure and you come across four answers and one of them is longer than the others and you've gone through these steps, more than likely the long one is gonna be the answer because they have to explain what it means, especially if there's a couple exceptions, they have to be very, a lot more detailed. And that detail can make the difference on a couple of questions and help you out, right? So that was number 12. Number 13, don't give up on a question after one reading. If it seems hopelessly confusing or hard, look at it from another angle, restate it in your mind, maybe draw a picture in your head, right, to try to understand it before you move on to the next question, as long as these are working. That should be the one you use the least amount, but it's good to have it. Don't give up, right? Unless you're close to the time running out, which these days nobody comes close to the time running out. If you take all the whole time, then you are reading way too much into the questions. So, but if you use that tip, right, as your last one, then that will help you maybe get one or two questions. Again, the goal is study, right, know the information, do decent on the, on the practice quiz. Before you go in, you get the green light. And then use these to really overcome those questions that put you over the top and no question gets you to pass the test. If you do that, you'll be successful. You'll pass the test on the first try.